starting of my third year. Starting of my third year, and uh, we have been using this um, high performance computing department's uh, infrastructure since the uh, earlier this summer to process our data. So this uh, this supercomputer is called Pegasus, and uh, it's uh, accessible for I believe for every uh, GW uh, professors as long as you all you need just to request a access to them and they will just give you a, uh, a key. And so you can access to that computer everywhere from your office or your home. And uh, so we were using this to help us processing our data because what we had, our situation was we have like a, about like 300 to 250 gig to 300 gig of the data. And that, that thing, we can't fit that thing to our memory. So we have to rely on the Pegasus to help us um, solving some of the uh, data cleaning process along the way. So to log in this uh, Pegasus, all you need to do is uh, for first request a SSH key. And uh, what you have is just a, uh, a line of code like this one. So if you are not in your home, then you have to uh, set up a, uh, a VPN to the GW network. And once you do that, you just run this code and the, what it will takes you is to the uh, login side where you just, uh, not, not, not login side, a, a, a where uh, in the terminal where you can type in your passcode and your uh, verif verification code. So all the uh, user has to set up the uh, two-factor authentication, uh, which if you're a new user, you'll, you'll be able to have uh, gain the information from this site and you are either using, uh, they're recommending using the Google Authenticator. That's what I'm using now. And once you are in the server, you are basically, you are in the login node. So in this node, uh, you can just basically store some of your, uh, some of your files, not, not big, and uh, small file or example files. But if you want to really uh, starting to using your, like uploading your, uh, real data set like those which like hundreds of gigs of data set and your codes uh, you have to use their uh, storage use their like storage uh, folders which is called luster i believe and they just recently changed their uh, uh, directory so if you just they will uh, assign you a group and they'll, they'll assign a folder in the group and uh, with your uh, lab name on that and uh, just uh, within there, you can store almost everything in it. So, uh, wait a sec. Oh yeah, sorry. It's, uh, uh, just typo, I believe. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to use CD because this is Rust on Linux. So within that, you can see, so this is our project. We have basically everything in it. Um, the split CSV is the, our data set. We have to rely on the uh, Pegasus to split our 300 gig data, 250 gig to 300 gig data set into uh, multiple of smaller data sets that's range, uh, that range from 1.6 to two gigs for each you know, split file. And in the data part, we have this, we have all the process data in it and we stored all the R codes here in the R codes folder. And uh, this Pegasus has uh, sorry, multiple nodes. So those are the basically the specific nodes which you push your uh, job to those nodes. The default queue is the uh, most uh, common one. It has, right now it has like, uh, all, all of nodes at this moment are occupied. You have like a 133 nodes are allocated and the some are maintained. Hey, Luigi, some are. Hey, Luigi, hey, Luigi, hey, Luigi. Uh, I'm hearing echoes. My guess is what John was going to say is if you could make the font bigger, they're looking at this on a screen. Okay. I just turned off the other speaker so that I can, I can't, no, but now I can't hear anything you're saying. All I can do is talk. All I was going to say was what, just make it larger and, and can you make the font size a little bigger so we can okay. is this see a little easier. Good that, was, enough? that was my only suggestion. So is this good enough awesome. for you guys? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have the default queue, which is, uh, which is you can run for 14 days. So the maximum period of your job is 14 days. And uh, 
you have a short which you can only run for one day and they still it has like pretty much occupied at this moment and you have for the people that have a different like for us our data is like sometimes too big so they have uh, nodes with bigger memory the default one i remember it has like 200 or 250 gig of the of memories and you have like a bigger memories like the, this short 348 gigabytes so it has like larger memories and uh, if you are if your uh, task is like like us that requires a very uh, intensive calculation uh, calculations and uh, sometimes we we test out like h4 gigs is not enough for us too then there's a high memory part high memory nos which only has two nos available so it's pretty limited it can run for 14 days but this basically can basically has like three terabytes or one terabyte of gigs that's basically can run every task we have at this moment and uh, we didn't touch for those graphical and debugs uh, uh nos during our uh during our uh data cleaning process but for those doing machine learnings i believe those uh, graphical they are just a bunch of gpus connected together that's good enough for you to do the uh you know the, the, the machine learning training and the most common used to one we, we we used is this nano one it runs only for like 30 minutes that's good for our for us to test whether our code is uh good or not or whether there's a bug in it so we basically what i did is i took a sample of our data and uh, run the test run on this nano nodes because it's only 30 minutes so there's a high turnout rate you don't have to wait for too long for those like default or a high memory nodes to be freed up so it's a pretty uh easy place for us to test our whether our uh, our uh, code is good or not and uh, to run this uh, we're using r for our example so to run this you first need to push all your r codes to the uh, pegasus into into your uh, lab folder and in it right now we have put basically all our codes here so inside it's just a uh, it's just a normal R code. For example, the uh, one field. Yeah. So inside, just like what we did in R code, it's just a normal R file. You have your reading your library. You just uh, you you can you can install your own library here, and you have uh, you can just set up the, uh, the the directory for the repo repo location and data location. And you just start running your codes, write, writing your codes like what you did in, in R. And basically, you can just write your code locally and push to the uh, Paxis. What we did here is basically we point out where is the code located and where is the data located, and we tell the Paxis to just run, uh, run, run the whole split CS, fit in the whole uh, data data set in the split CSV file uh, folder, and we just. Uh, run our own functions, which called process CSV. And uh, we just keep doing this three times and that's the end of this one. And basically all the other, uh, all the other uh, files are look, look similar like this. And uh, all the other file looks similar like this. We load all our library in this zero setup file and uh, basically set up all the variables and the functions, which is pretty detailed. So just like what you did in your notebook, how how you how you're gonna run your code normally in your local uh, computers, and uh, once you push all your file in it, uh, to push this file into uh, Pegasus, you need to use uh, something called a uh, sbatch function. So you need to first write a shell a sh shell file, which is uh, what we have here is data cleaning shell yes this file is the data cleaning shell so all your command to the packs is stored here so all the files start with with this a hashtag uh, this one and the bin bash so all the files start with this so the packs knows this is a uh, something you need to push to the uh, spe specific nodes and you always start with those two file the first one gives you the output that's what your R code normally, like if you want to print hello world, hello world in your R, then your output will be displayed in here. 
And this is all the warning and errors you have. So once your code is finished, you first check the error to see if there's any you know, error message to indicate that your code didn't run. And that's how you debug using Pegasus. And now, and this is indicating how many nodes I'm going to use and which specific nodes I'm, you know, I'm requesting. So in this part, we're saying I want to use the default Q nodes and I only need one of that. And uh, there's some fancy thing. And uh, be careful, uh, just uh, in the shell, shell script, uh, if you want to comment something, you have to use a, you need to use a hashtag and a space. And uh, if you want this thing to be, you know, a command push to the Pegasus, you don't need any space in between. So here is saying, I want to send a notification to those two e email address once the uh, once my task is done because sometimes I can the task can be last for like here is fourteen days, so uh, but but I request this not for fourteen days but this uh, task could be well finished within two or three days, so I don't have to wait all for all like fourteen days to check whether my task is finished or not. They will just send you a mail says like hey your task is done and uh, you know. You can just go to the Pegasus and double check. And uh, once you, for all those things are set for the Pegasus to know which node and how long you want to run your task. And here is basically this ML means module. So the Pegasus is pre-installed with Python or basically all the uh, data, uh, what's that data processing language you, you, you're gonna use like Java, C, C++, everything are there. And so you have to let the Pegasus know which module you are using. And for us, we're using the R 4.1.1. And then it's just getting all the uh, R script we have listed here. And uh, if we want to push for the first R script, what we do, we just delete this, this section, the, the hashtag and space section and the hashtag this one. So this file, if I push to the R, uh, push to the Pegasus, they will run this script. So there, first you need to uh, saying this is R script, then you put your uh, directory to that R file here. And uh, it's just basically I'm saying I'm going to run this file specifically. And uh, in, our, in, our, in most cases, if your R script are run, you know, writing consecutive orders and they're without box, you can basically, uh, remove those hashtag altogether and it will run smoothly, you know, one by one. They'll run one by one. They'll first run this and this and this, and uh, you just push this whole thing to Pegasus together. And uh, after like 14 days, finger crossed, you will have, you know, you have your finalized data set ready for you after you, you know, after the whole session. But in our case, sometimes running R is a little bit tricky in Pegasus. We don't know why. And we've been contacting with uh, Glenn, who is in charge of the, 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 the department about this. And uh, they couldn't figure out why, but sometimes our R codes doesn't finish. So it's like run for 14 days. It used to have all the 14 days, but it just didn't finish the task. And we couldn't verify like whether this is a Pegasus issue or our codes issue. So in our case, we couldn't run this, you know, we have to run this one by one so we can have like a periodic results and we can verify in our local file and we can decide whether we, can, we want to run this part locally or on the Pegasus. And, but that's for like later. And uh, once you have- Can I ask a quick question? Sure. If you have more than one node running, will it do them in parallel or it just still does them in sequence? even if you have more than one node that you're using. Okay. So that one, we haven't tried that because we don't want to mess our data. It's pretty, uh, we, 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 we try to run this locally using parallel com, com, uh, computing, but on Pegasus, we try to be safe. And you know, because Pegasus has, hasn't been performing very well with our code. So we're trying to be very, very safe, so we didn't try to using like multiple nodes, nodes. But all those questions you can ask Glenn about it. They are like uh, they didn't know their stuff about the Pegasus and the, 
they know they have people knowing R and Python that can help you with your specific questions. And I believe, oh yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> right. It's 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 pretty weird. And okay, back to to to, to the chat. So once you have this uh, shell function shell script write out, all you need to do is using the s batch. Oh gosh. So as bash function and uh, saying I want to run this data cleaning, data cleaning shell, and once you run it, which I won't because I don't want to mess up the data I have right now, uh, you can see your see your task using the using the command as quick, and the, the, you have you will have your job ID, which nodes you're in, and uh, the status the status whether it's pending or running and how long it has been running. So basically you have your information here and all the output, as I mentioned, will be stored in the error and out, the error and out. And the, the error will give you the, uh, the, the error will give you all the warning, like this is when I loading the, uh, all the packages and they will just, normally in R, you will just give you those warnings and uh, here, uh, you see, this is a failed failed one. So in here, bef before this error, those are normal warning because that's what we see in, in locally. But here you see this is a error, something there's a bug happening and all you need to do is just uh, try to read through this uh, error message and see what's going on with this one. And uh, it just says ex execution hot, hot. So this is something you need to be debugging with something you need to be dealt with and all the output here will be stored in the uh, here. Oh, sorry, nano, yeah. And since our R code didn't have any like output information, so this one will be normally empty, but you have need to print something. If you want to, to uh, display something, everything will be in this out. And the data will just store in the, in the, in the, directory which we you know pointed here we have our data is stored in here the data folder and those are all everything we've been processed and the once you have your data ready then you can just start to let me uh, minimize this oh no create a new one so once you have all your data ready then it's time to download or upload your data so to Upload your data is basically using this uh, uh, synchronizing command. Synchronizing command here, which fir first part is saying uh, what kind of, so, so this is pretty important. So this partial is pretty important because sometimes your connection may lost. So you having this partial here, the Pegasus will continue download from where the failure point is where the failure, failure point was. So you don't have to re-download the whole data set. You will start from, like if you download the data for 30 minutes and you've lost your connection, then you just uh, re, re, uh, reconstruct your connection and your download will resume from where you, you know, the whole process halted. And the other part is your uh, SSID, uh, SSH, the, the, the key for, for, uh, for me is, for normally they'll give you a uh, net ID you used in, in GWU. And then start is the, the first part is the, uh, is, the, is the file you want to push or pull. So in our case, we want to uh, pull this data, data clean shell from Pegasus to my local hard drive. So if I'm running this, they will just pull this data running from here so they'll still ask you to type in your credentials and you need your two-factor authenticator and once you shoot. yeah once you do this you just start synchronizing and it will start downloading things and uh, right now because uh, uh some error oh yeah i didn't connect my hard drive yeah <laughs> This is a hard drive location. I didn't connect that. So basically you're retrieving the file and uh, push your push this file to this location. And if you want to upload a file, you just do the, you know, re revert, revert this process. You just copy your local directory here. You, 
you copy your local directory here and uh, separate the local and the Pegasus directory with a space, then what this code will do is, uh, let me make a quick example. So what this file will do is, it will try to grab this data cleaning shell from my hard drive and push this file to one space, push this file to this directory. And so if I do this, you are uploading your file to the Pegasus. So this is basically how you upload and download your file you know, to or from Pegasus. But still there, there's a caveat here is that during this process, some of your file can get corrupted, which happened to us. So we process the file locally on our uh, computer and we try to push this, uh, it's, it's like six gig of the, uh, Com com compressed data to Paxis for next step. And this, during this process, one and two, one or two uh, compressed file got corrupted due to this uploading process. And we have to re-upload that specific file again and solves all the problem. So you have to be like careful about this. And uh, sometimes when we try to, uh, oh yeah, here. Sometimes when we're trying to install a package package in Pegasus to R, uh, things could happen again. Is that uh, your install process got you know interrupted due to loss of connection or some you know disruption in the network, and this whole process will, will shut down, and you can't reinstall the package right away because. They just they already created a file in some library in in, in this Pegasus, and uh, you have to delete the original file, which it uh, delete the, the the old file, the, the the failed installation file you tried at the first step, and then you can you know reinstall the the, the package pack, package you want, and this process you can do it by by yourself because you have to request for some admin access. Uh, admin access, so you have to contact the uh, HPC department and they will send somebody and they set up a meeting and they will delete the file for you, which can take pretty long time from my experience because sometimes they are pretty busy, but sometimes they are, you know, pretty free. So just it, it's, it's, it's this process can take some time, you know, some back and forth between you and their them. So uh, but once you have the data and everything set up, I would say it's pretty uh, pretty easy process because we don't have a very bad, a very good computer on my hand, but the packs can do most of the job on their own. So all I need to do is I just need to plug in my hard drive, push the data to the packs from my home, and then uh, I can do other things like reading papers while the packs is, is doing the data cleaning. So it's pretty, Save, save a lot of time for us and for all the information and instruction and documentations and how to get started so they have this website here which i will copy to the uh the, 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 the chat so this is where the home page for the whole, for whole thing it has documentation it says how to get started and how to request an account and they have some rules like you can't run your job using the login nodes. You have to push that to a specific Pegasus node, like the, the default queue, high memory queue. And uh, they have the, like what the available module you have, like those are all the like data, uh, all, all the module they have here, ranging from Python R and the, the whatever. And uh, if you didn't find the, the thing you want to use here, you just need to contact them and they will install it for you. And it's pretty a, a customized experience for us. Like you just add, tell them what you want and they will just set up the environment for you. And then you can just you know, run it through running, run, running your code using the terminal. And the, all the terminal command are based, that the packs is based on Linux. So you just need to be familiarized with uh, some basic Linux command. And then you're like, I'll say you're free to go. Yeah. So I had a question with, you said you ran into some problems with using particular packages in R. Were these 
I mean, it has a set of installed packages already, and these um, were specialty ones you were using. So they don't have a lot of packages. So they only have some basic packages, and you have to. So for for our instance, uh, so this is Lavi. Wait, why? Let, let me let me pull out my code real quick. Wait a sec. Uh, huh. Oh yeah. And my login. Okay, I'll show you from my R. Oh, it's, it's really weird. So for our experience, we are using like all those packages for our data processing, uh, for our data processing and the R doesn't have all of them. Like for the here package, for the uh, ggplot, I believe they don't have that. And we're using some very specific package like Arrow, which is a, uh, which is a data set, which is a package that allow us to condense our data to a manageable size. So we have to install that on our own. And to do that, you just like how you did on, on your local R studio, you just uh, uh, type like install package, install packages and uh, type the whatever package you are, whatever package you want to use. And uh, so basically you just put this type of code in the R script, push to the packages, I run that, they will install it. But sometimes there's like, the connection is not very stable. So you may lose your connection during that process and it, it took longer for packages to install those packages. So if there's- but once a, they're installed, you don't have problems. You don't, yeah, yeah. Once you install, it's installed, you don't have, I don't, we don't experience uh, issues using those packages, but I believe it's some R issue that some of our uh, jobs never finished. So it's never finished. It just keep running for the whole 14 days and the data set didn't grow in size. So there's no new data you know, got wrote, uh, written into that data set. So we don't know what happened there and they are really pretty confused too. And uh, we think it's either a, uh, their packages issue or is our packages, our package is not very you know, compatible with, with how packages is set up. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's not, I don't, I'm not sure it's a common issue, but for us, it's been troubling us for the whole summer and it couldn't be solved. So uh, we have to, you know, make some, uh, so we couldn't run all our script using Pegasus because it will run into this issue of corrupting files or job never got finished. So this is our issue. That's why initially you see, you say you saw our, in our, uh, in our data cleaning shell script, we have to comment those R script, you know, and we have to handpick the specific R script we, we want to run. And then we have to go back forth, back and forth from Pegasus and the local computers to complete the whole data cleaning process. Exclusive version. Yeah, there are several different R versions are there. And uh, I believe you can find them here. See, they are like different R's. And I believe they installed R 4.1.1 based on our request because our packages are compatible with the latest R or, or the R 4.1.1. So uh, they just installed that, that module for us specifically. And uh, like for Python, you can, say, you can see like there's different version. You have Python 2 and Python 3. And uh, based on your situation, you can all, always request them, ask them to, you know, we were running into some issue and can you install this uh, module for us? They, normally they will, they will do it. So it's, it's pretty common request, I believe. And uh, yeah, just, uh, I'm not sure for Python. So I have been using for Python for a while, but for R, like what I just showed to Ryan, it's just uh, uh, put your, like how, how, normally how you're gonna install your packages in R, you just type install packages. And normally you will do that in the console directly, but since this is a, 
this is Pegasus, what I do is I just put that in the script and run that script and the Pegasus will install it. And uh, well, this third, you can get clone and target and repo. Uh, so we did use the GitHub there, but they do recommend to using the GitHub to store your codes. But I believe, I don't think they can connect that to GitHub. And uh, in their website, they specifically mentioned that they recommend to store your code in, uh, in GitHub because uh, every month there's a purge. So they will clean the unused data and unused file from their server. And they will do that based on your, like, uh, the, the, your activity pattern. If you didn't access to that folder for like three months, they will just purge that and they'll send you an email notification. Like uh, in, this is called in November 1st, we're doing our monthly purge. And if you uh, don't access your file or don't back up your file, you're gonna be deleted forever from our system. So they will send you a warning like this. So they recommend you to, you know, always keep a copy of your data and your codes somewhere else and GitHub prefer preferably. And uh, uh, so, yeah, this is a very Python specific question I'll say. So locally, yeah, locally you can set an environment for this, but since I didn't use Python for this job, I'm not sure how you're gonna set up an environment for this. But since it runs on Linux, you can always do that. And uh, for, I would say for the specific questions, because uh, we didn't run into all those questions, so I'm not familiar with, you know, those one. I would say, uh, I would say uh, ask Glenn about this, the, the one who will set you up on this. And uh, for the last one, uh, their job script, there, there is an example on their documentations. So uh, I there is a example I believe I couldn't find that currently because I haven't accessed that for a while, but you can find all you want here in 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 this website and their documentation is pretty straightforward and you just need to ask Lynn about okay uh, scheduling job with slur yeah okay yeah there there is a. There's a, a full uh, introduction to the uh, to what I showed about the all the nodes and uh, you have the like more detailed specs on each nodes. Like the high memory have three terabytes, and uh, which can do most of things. And the example here, okay, they're undergoing maintenance, but you'll find an example of a shell shell script about how to set up the. The one I just showed you, like you have the which nodes you want, uh, send the email notification, uh, how long you want this nodes to be occupied by you. And you, you can find this through this link, but they're just going some minutes here, which unfortunately I can't show you, but yeah, basically, and you have a uh, whole Linux, you know, uh, support if you're new, new to Linux. So basically all the documents are there and the Glenn will run through a, uh, run through some, you know, uh, examples with you once you set up your account. And uh, they're pretty, they're, they're pretty helpful, I'll say. Oh yeah, and the monthly reset is not always monthly. So if you are accessing to this folder regularly, like what we did during the summer, then you don't have to worry about this. They're doing this based on your activity pattern. So if you don't access to that for a very long time, then you have to you know, make sure you backed up everything. But if you're using this, then you don't have to you know, uh, back up this. You, know, you don't have to be nervous about this monthly purge if you are actively using access to those all the file and your, your data. So another question I had that might be helpful to some people too is now based on your experience and knowing some of the challenges in doing it, I mean, there are obviously a lot of advantages in having multiple nodes available for doing this type of analysis. How would you say people should make decisions about whether a project sh 
should move oh. to Pegasus or whether you should just keep trying it on your own machine because of those challenges and getting it to work right on Pegasus? So I'll say uh, if your data is really big, like for us, we have like 250 to 300 gig of the data and uh, it requires some very intense uh, data cleaning process. So I would recommend to use Pegasus to do some, to do at least to do some very basic things to, for us is slice the data into something we can manage and do some uh, heavy lifting of some very specific processing work. Or you are, if, you, if you are not sure about whether your code runs and not sure about how the data looks, then I would say you probably want to run it locally to make sure your code actually works and uh, you, you, you understand what your data looks like. In you have a general sense about your data. Otherwise, as you can say, you can see previously, it's really weird to debug using Pegasus. You have to push your job and waiting for like, you don't know like how long you're gonna run into the bug. So you have to keep checking the Pegasus or checking your email box. And uh, after get back, get back to Pegasus, you show a like part of the, you show your error message. It's really hard for you to figure out like what's going on. No, just using the Pegasus. So what I will say is if your data is too big, then use the Pegasus to slice that to some like, just to take a sample, like take a two gig uh, from your data, from your whole data set. So you can get a general idea about the data. You can test your code. And uh, once you're pretty confident about whether your code is, you know, bug free or at least no major issues, then you can push to the Pegasus, you know, otherwise it's really a, really a tough back and forth before uh, between you know debug and uh, you know, update the code and push to the Pegasus and you know, notice you run into another error then you know, download the code and debug again and you know, push back to the Pegasus it's really a painful back and forth so only use but you definitely need that because sometimes data is too big so this is a hardware constraint uh, unless you, you you'd want to buy a new computer Otherwise, the Pegasus is pretty a much easier option for you to you know have some hard hardware you know loss of memories, loss of uh, computing power for you to process the data. But debugging, I would say, you want to do that locally. Do others have questions? Okay. Um, I have a question. I just uh, you don't hear me. Yeah, I can okay. hear. You. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Eugene, this was this was great. Um, obviously, this is all work that like we're doing. Um, and I mean, one one point I wanted to raise though was about like the time trade off. I think there is certainly. Like when you're, if, if you're in a position where you can run something locally on your computer, everything is going to go so much faster. <laughs> Just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in terms of getting the intellectual part done, like writing the scripts and making sure the scripts are good and they're clean. And so we, we went through this sort of back and forth where, you know, we, we would attempt to take like a sample of the data and write all the scripts. And, um, but the gene sale had to spend the whole summer, like working on this problem. I mean, it was a pretty big problem, um, trying to clean this very large data set, but it took it took months to get through the whole process because it's it's not as straightforward as just like okay we just send the shell script and let it go because like as you heard there's like installing packages you know there's corruptions of files and I think whenever you're using a machine of this size and power like you just be prepared for uh, the the time it's going to take and also be mentally ready for like constant problem solving. So, I mean, Luigi, did you, did you know how to do any of this in like January of this year? No, yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it's gonna be like, you know, do everything in a snap because our <laughs> data is pretty ready and I was pretty confident that, you know, our code runs. And then it turns out, so it's, it's, it turns out like the job never finished. So we have to, we have to identify which part packs it got stuck. And uh, so we have to make other plans to bypass those steps using our local machines. 
like which I mentioned, we have to slice the data thinner and so we can run it locally. And uh, we also have run into some issue that, um, that the file got corrupted. So we have also have to identify which file got corrupted and we have to you know, reprocess that specific, specific file either locally or on Pegasus. And uh, it's, it's a constant back and forth. And, uh, and also interestingly, the data this big, like 300, 200 to 300 gig, the data this big, sometimes you only have two gig of the sample is not enough. So my experience, we, 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 I took 10 samples. So it's, that's 20 gig of the file and I, it's smoothly on our local machine, but once pushed to the Pegasus to the whole data set, somewhere in, you know, in those, uh, you know, in those like the, 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 date, the, 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 the data we didn't sample from, somewhere there, there's always one row, two row having some anomalies, some, you know, outlier data that doesn't fit to our script. So yeah, we try to identify those issues and it's really a pain to navigate through all those data. And uh, we, it doesn't that straightforward as what we thought, but it still have helped us a lot because they're just something we couldn't do, you know, because the physical constraint of our computer. But Pegasus is not ominous, so. It's, you, you, it's still a machine and uh, you have to, you know, <laughs> working with it instead of, it's not working, Pegasus is not working for you. It's more like I'm working with it and uh, try to figure out something we both agree. And, uh, Does it yeah. talk to you? Mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Our, I have a question about the, uh, about the project. Uh, like what is the analysis that you're doing Oh yeah. And then how did you decide to work with such a big data set? Do you get different results from working with a full data set relative to just taking a yeah. sample of it? Um, so our process is pretty, uh, so what we have is we got data from uh, cars.com about America's, uh, the, the listing on that website from 2016 to 2022. So. It's a very big data set. It's very nasty. It has uh, lots of uh, weird stuff in it. And uh, it, it records whether this cars, price, mileage, uh, you know, all those informations. And what we want to do is because it, it's a very nasty data set, we want to clean it to make sure at least uh, we, we don't have multiple listings for one car because sometimes the dealer can list one car in different locations. And so in our data set, one Prius could turn up having 30 or 40 listings. And we need to identify those. But before doing that, we need to, uh, we need to first uh, know like what kind of powertrain is uh, this car is using? Uh, what type of car is this a sedan SUV? So there's lots of information we need to extra extract from that before we go into uh, the last step, last step to eliminate those duplicates. And uh, so let me show real quick. And I need to, oh yeah, also my my hard drive got fried running this. So right now probably is not connecting to it. So let me show a code we used before that. Uh, Cars.com. I mean, this is all the step one of the process. There's, there's four or five research questions that we're investigating with this data set. Yeah. But like all like, <clears throat> and I have multiple students who were all working on it, but Lugene has taken the charge of like preparing the data for analysis. So we yeah. have to get it into a clean, nice sort of tabular structure. Then we can bring it in locally on our machines and do regression work and things. Yeah. But so for this step, we're just starting with the whole data set try to condense the one one layer. So this process, we are having a something called arrow. It's, it's an Apache arrow. So this is a data format that can allow you to store data like efficiently, I would say. So our current data looks like something, uh, something like this. So you see, if the, this is the current data set. So this is the Apache arrow. So right now we have this make model price data, data set. 
the first layer is whether this car is a used car or not, or, or a new car. So one means used, zero means new. But within it, we identify whether it is a car, MPV, pickup, SUV, or whatever. So what's the car it is. And one step deeper is what kind of uh, fuel it is using. It's using a Bevis like battery electric vehicle, it's a natural gas, diesel, uh, flex, I'm not sure what's that, and uh, hybrids. <laughs> PHEV is plug-in hybrid. So we're identify specifically what kind of power you're using. And uh, then we're saying whether this is a from Acura, Audi, uh, BMW. And if it's a BMW, is it, is, is it a series one, series two, series two, series one, you know, what, what kind of model it is. And finally, it's our data. So this is our data. This record like all the model four from BMW using gasoline that's a car and that's a used one, used listing from that data set. So it's easier for us to, you know, pick up, pick which data we want to use. So we don't want to, you know, collect, uh, load all the whole data set to our machine all the time. We want to be efficient on this. So this is our final target. And uh, to do this, we have to take all the data set together and starting Pushing this to a uh, pushing this to a uh, first process the this, then push that to a uh, raw error data set. So this one layer, so we have to condense at the first step, and then we have to extract the uh, dealer information, the make and model information to know uh, what dealer we have, the dealer ID and the, the make model pair we have in this whole data set. So this part is pretty intense, so we have to use access for this and then we'll have to clean those because some those address some of those make model name are pretty random so we'll have to fit that into a general term so we can you know rematch that to so we can you know condense the similar cars to a to a single to to, to the same folders later so we'll have to clean this and this part we can do it locally and for the build and powertrain, then this is another layer. So we have to start pushing our data set to what we what you just saw earlier. They have different layers. So we have to start cleaning this, you know, push that layer by layer. And this part we have to rely on Pegasus to do it because just it has some processing, you know, in those functions. And we have to, you know, adjust some columns, you know, mutate some values so we have to use Paxis for this and then you just remove the duplicates and there's a whole this is a whole process that we have to use Paxis for this and for the make a model this part is just a intermediate step and we can do it locally and we prefer to do it locally so that in this step we know which file is corrupted which file is not so we can just go back to the Pegasus to ask Pegasus to process those corrupted files specifically, or we can do it locally because right now we know we only need to process those specific uh, make, a mo make a models. And then we, we can, after we're pretty confident that the data is you know, without corrupted files, then we push to the Pegasus asking to remove the duplicates for us. And we got a clean data set that has one gate, one, listing for each car for each cell and we can use that data to for our future analysis and after this whole processing this data is only i believe it's only two gig so the, the yeah. <laughs> starting data was like uh, yeah two and 2.5 gig this is we're starting from 250 to 300 i forgot the exact number and the, all those information are useless or we can condense that smaller. Now it's only 2.5. And from this point, we can fit in the local memory and we can just, you know. Yeah, so a big part of that con condensing was re re removing duplicate information. And in this particular problem, there's just tremendous amounts of duplicated information. There's, there's a lot of cars that have, you know, 30 or 40 rows that are exactly the same information. It's just, you know, multiple dealers listing the same thing. So once you dedupe that, that's where you have most of your memory size reduction. But, but the, the, the structure of these files that, that Eugene was talking about, that's just, an, that's just arrow 
So if you're if you're ever dealing with large data sets, I recommend you know toying around with the arrow package. There's a Pi Arrow as well if you want to access Arrow through Python. Um, I did a little demo of Arrow as well. There's like an earlier, I think last semester I did a GW Coder's intro to Arrow, so you can go back and see that. But um, it basically just partitions the data set up into lots of small files that are organized in a convenient way in your folders. So if you want to pull in like, let me bring in all of the BMW 3 Series, it it can read that in extremely quickly because it only has to go find that one file and read it in. So it's, it's all partitioned in a very intelligent way that makes um, querying the data very fast. So, you know, you could do something very similar on like just create an SQL database and run your queries that way, but Arrow is just mind-blowingly fast and it's it's highly optimized. Yeah. Um, and, and for Erica, yeah. For going to Erica's question, so for Arrow data set, once you open it, you are not you are not reading the data set at this moment. So you're just pointing the R to say like this is the uh, data set I'm going to open. And uh, inside it, you can you can do some uh, filtering process. Like I only want those rows, and I only I can filter for some conditions uh, before you really collect your data set. So this is really efficient because this 2.5 gig still takes some time for you to process this. But for Arrow, you can do those filtering and the selection before you actually collect the whole data set. And once you do that. It's just a, it's, it's going to be a very fast process for you to, you know, collect and uh, you know, navigate through a, a big data set. Right now, 2.5 is small, but if you have a big data set, it's going to be really fast. And for Erica's question, so we don't know how long it's going to be done at the beginning, but naturally, 14 days is safe. Like, <laughs> if this job can be finished within 14 days, uh, something's wrong but normally our job took like within one day or two it's going to be finished and uh, we uh, we only use 14 days several times during our process because we don't know uh, like i mentioned some of our job didn't finish didn't finish so we want to know like if it's our problem that not giving packages enough time to process it, those data or it's Pegasus issue that it doesn't you know run very com very compatible with our packages. So it turns out like we run 14 days and it, it took Pegasus 14 days to it, it didn't finish the job within that 14 days. So we're pretty sure that you know the computer if 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 something you know with those memories, those computing power can finish this in 14 days, there gotta be something wrong with the compatibility of the how the system is constructed and our packages. So it's more like a debug, debug process for us. And for the nano part, it's just, you just take a small sample from the data, try to test on this nano thing and to make sure your code, there's not some like silly issue, like you're not pointing your directory correctly because you're running on Paxis instead of your local directory now. So something got to be changed. So just more like, get through those city issues and probably gonna you know give you some uh, logic or syntax logic logic error you know when you run this and uh, you can have a sample output sample sample output and try to look at whether the data got processed you know according to your design so the nano is pretty useful but for us to split the data there's a linux command called split CSV or something like that. And for us is we want to make sure the data have the same, same row for each file. As, and so what we did is there's a option in that split CSV command that we asked them to split uh, 160,000 160, 160, of rows or 10, 16,000 of rows. I forgot what was the exact is that number but 16 with lots of zero rows okay, we gotta go. and yeah we just do that and so we have equal size of csvs and we just randomly pick some csv from those you know files and uh, try to test our code on this so this is a uh there are some some codes in in linux that allows you to split that 
Well, thank you very much, Eugene. This has been very um, interesting and useful. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, if you want to, if you feel comfortable putting your email into the chat room and then yes. people can contact you if they have more questions. But I know that our time is up for this week. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit stop recording. Yeah, we got to run the class. So I'm going to jump off.